the the next thing that everybody remembers or thinks of Florida about it was probably a little more serious. That was, they took it all over the country, but Jack Briscoe and Dory Funk Jr. Right. It was for 1969 to 73, it was the flare and steamboat of that time. Right. It was the gold standard in the ring. The two best in the world at what they did. Was Eddie Graham, because it's no secret that the Briscoe family and the Funk family had some Enmity was, was yeah. the word. There was a little tension there. Right. Is there heat? <laughs> I can feel it. It's not scalding, but yeah. it's there. Yeah. Austin Idol. Yeah. Um, Eddie Graham, Jack Briscoe was his protege. Right. At the same time, Dory Funk Jr. and Terry Funk were like extended members of the family yeah, because absolutely. he had worked for their father and their father had taught him. So he was the one that could get in there and get the best out of both of them. And still right. to this day, I guess that the one hour show, which still exists on tape, I've got a copy of Jack and Dory sitting down with Eddie Graham and Gordon Soley and discussing their one hour draw in St. Petersburg. Right. You watch that and you think this was a legitimate sporting contest between two wrestlers that just happened to be professionals instead of amateurs and they were serious about it. Yeah. And they drew money in every NWA territory in the country just by coming in cold sometimes, whether it be St. Louis or whatever, place they didn't even work. Main event, boom, for the title, Briscoe Funk, and they drew money. That was Eddie Graham's. Even though he didn't wrestle like that as a wrestler, yeah. and I'm droning on here now, he was a brawler, he was right, a fighter, threw right, the great right. right punch, but he loved that kind of wrestling, and that's what he presented really the best, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely, and you know, uh, when you say, when you just said that to me, you know, Briscoe and Funk, it's Ali and Frazier. Yeah. They both needed each other, you know what I mean? And the interesting thing about that thing you saw, the uh, hour Broadway, they came back two months later and went 90 minutes. <sighs> and, ah. you know, in Florida, you didn't have to stay and watch the matches. But when Briscoe and Funk came in, everybody stayed, yeah, everybody, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it was the most legitimate feel I ever saw in my life to any wrestling match. And I'm not diminishing Steamboat and Flair at all, but it was a different thing. You know, you it still you still had Rick being Rick. This was an athletic contest between Florida and Texas. And Texas. And and also to be honest to be fair to both Rick right. and both Ricks, Flair and Steamboat. Neither one of them were an NCAA wrestling champion, right. so Briscoe had a little leg up in working a, a worked, legitimate contest, right. and Dory, because of his training and his father and et cetera, you know, he was one of the guys that could hang. Well, I'm sure you know this, Jimmy. They used to, uh, this, this was way ahead of its time, okay? And I uh, used to think, where are they going to take this, you know? And they kind of didn't go anywhere. But they would have the Funks against uh, the Briscoes in Florida in a tag match, yeah. right? And they would send that tape back, and they would re-audio the tape so the Funks were baby faces in Amarillo. In Amarillo, yeah. And they and would send it back the other way. Then they would do it in Amarillo and send it back with the, you know, uh, Funks with heels. And they did a thing one time that was, you know when we talk about subtle things? Do you remember the angle with the father mistakenly hitting the bell? The, yes, yes, but what, 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 what were the details? What the, were the details? The things was, it was for Dory's belt. Yeah. And Jack went in for the figure four, but it was about 58 minutes. And, you know, supposedly seniors getting excited and excited and excited, and he goes over. By mistake, he hits the big gong, right? Like the gong. Yeah. <laughs> gong. The referee calls it off, right? And then the they had the guy make him believe was a, uh, Stanley Blackburn, right? Yeah. He's saying, no, 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 there's two minutes left. There's two minutes left. Junior rolls out of the ring, limping around. And Dory Cena's yeah. like, oh, I didn't mean I to didn't hit mean that. To do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, that little thing, uh, you know, then Eddie came, made a promo. Uh, and they had a thing from uh, Telegram, you know, back in those days, Telegrams were big. Sam Mushnick, we're looking into this. We're going to ban uh, Funk Sr. from ever being at ringside in any arena yeah. in the United States. And in fact, next week, uh, we've banned 
Terry Funk for Russ uh, being on a card with uh, Briscoe and Funk, right? I mean, Dory and yeah. Jack. So right away you're thinking, oh, the belt's going to change now. They don't, they're not in here, right? And that's how they got into the 60 Minutes. Well, and then, to be honest, nobody knows yet, and Eddie Graham was in the middle of that when, I know. when Dory was supposed to drop the belt to, to Jack, and then word came from yeah. Texas that Dory had had a, a truck, wreck. truck wreck on the ranch, yeah. herding some cattle, turned over in a, a gully, and had, they sent pictures of him in the hospital, right. in the sling, etc. That's kind of what started the issue with the Briscoe family, right. because he don't want to put me over. Right. And then just to make sure, when they got Dory back in the ring, that's why it went from Dory to Harley, and then Harley to, right. to Jack. It, Eddie had to be in the middle of that, and there's right. Jack as his homemade hometown boy, you know, his oh. homemade protege. What? He was bullshit. Was he, he was absolutely bullshit. And I can remember him saying, again, this is when I was uh, really close to him. I heard him yelling, and very seldom did Eddie yell, you know. I heard him yelling at the phone to Mush, this is bullshit, this is bullshit. And he said to him, everybody thinks it was because old man Funk didn't want Dory to lose to a baby face. You know that, right? Yeah. That's what yeah. everybody thinks. It had to be a, there was it something had to be a heel, right? That yeah, was the story. Yeah, yeah, it had to be yeah. a heel. But. He didn't want to lose to a that he wasn't the best wrestler. Yeah. Okay. But there's a little bit more to this story. And you'd be the guy to find out. You know, at that time, they started booking opposition in Japan, the Funks. Remember? They, they went, that's when they went to New Japan. That's right, because. So it, here's yeah. what they wanted to do they want to send Dory over there to defend the belt. It's because they wanted to have a tournament for the belt. Do you remember that? They were going to have a tournament? Yes, yes. They were going to have a tournament, and Holly was going to win, or Jack was going to win. It didn't matter or yeah. for Old Man Funk. Whoever won the tournament was champion. But Junior was going to go over there as the undefeated NWA champion and give them credibility, even though at that time, Anoki uh, uh, wasn't in. The and NWA. that's what he ended up going because did they had they had an hour draw Dory yeah, and Anoki yeah, at some yeah, point seventy yeah, three yeah, or whatever yeah, and that's yeah. on one of those compilation tapes. Yeah, yeah. So there was more to it than just that, and this was like, and you know that Eddie Graham would have not let anything happen to the NWA relationship with Giant Baba. Right. So okay. And uh, uh, th that's where I think that sometimes. There's always more to the story, like Paul Harvey, the rest yeah. of the story. It wasn't just losing in the tournament. Because if you look at it, really, if you look at it on paper, what a house you draw, right? With the uh, 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 one-night tournament yeah. with Briscoe, Terry, Harley. You know, you could throw anybody in there at that time, too. Well, you know, uh, Kaniski, Thez could come out of retirement. You could yeah. throw... You're going to sell out. It wasn't so much that I don't think that Eddie saw. He saw them taking the belt that Jack's going to have, even though it isn't around his waist. The lineage. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. yeah, and it wasn't around his waist, but he's the undefeated NWA champion. Now you're giving legitimacy to Anoki. Now Bob is going to be pissed, right? Yeah. Now they're trying to, you know, 